Welcome back to the fourth part of me building a plasma cutter. We're going to try and fine tune it a bit more, do a bit of cable management, calibrate it a bit, and uh, yeah, just try and refine it and get some better cuts and uh, maybe better successes. Yeah, plans for this episode. Uh, tidy up the wiring, enable limit switches, I'm trying to decide where my XY origin is going to be. I think it's going to be over that side now. As we look at it, portrait type thing doesn't make any difference too much. I just wanted a sort of a juicy amount of wires. Um, I've now, hard to say to talk technically. What I've been doing in these last tests is been using a CNC commander program and I was drawing a shape, a circle in that basically. Um, and that's their software and that sort of got the thing moving and doing circles. What I couldn't get to work was, all the way from Fusion 360 is what I use to generate G-code, which I've got that to do, generate G-code, but then when I put the G-code into the CNC commander, it didn't like it. Um, but I've spent a bit of time now, I won't go into details, but basically in Fusion 360, I've set up my own CNC plasma table tool, and I was able to sort of program that to generate the correct G-code that I needed. And uh, I've just found this other, um, other tool which just sends the G code to it and it works. So, well, hopefully it works as we're going to test. So basically I can go straight from Fusion 360 all the way to this without doing any sort of intermediary steps and fiddling and fuddling. Anyway, that's a bit of a blah blah talk there. Okay, we're back after five, six days away. Recuperating-ish, not still working. But uh, got ourselves a stellar and I need to redo some of these uh, relay pins and plugs and stuff. So I ended up just splashing out and buying hopefully the correct crimping tool. So we we'll give that a go. We'll give that a go, hopefully. And uh, we also picked up some shielded sheath a bit small I think so I'm not too sure how many wires we're going to fit through that it was the only one on Amazon that I could get quickly all the others are all from China but we'll see how that goes and I also want to try and run some earths as well it seems like earthing is very important with these plasma cutters especially the DIY ones anyway because lots of interference and I already had the relay board lock up once and it wouldn't stop plasma in sit rep just uh just doing a test run on something. I've got a bit of five mil in there. I'm just going to try some of that because I've started shielding some of the cables. I haven't completely done all the routing yet. I've added limit switches to the homing so it can home. Although I've put the limit switch on the floating head there, which isn't ideal or it's not right perfectly because it shouldn't be on the floating head, I don't think. But I'm still thinking about that. So yeah, all homing limiting switches are fitted. You can have limiting switches and I should have at the opposite end as well. So basically it will just shut down the system, software related anyway, if uh, you go too far. Uh, what else have I been doing? I've just balanced the bed slightly, leveled the bed slightly using the, the brackets and just nipped them up a little bit. And so yeah, I just wanted to see if it still works again. I haven't done something for a while, so.
Ah, yeah, that's it. Didn't turn off. I think it's because maybe the head got caught on the, on the slats. Yeah, see, that wasn't even cut and didn't even do the five mil. trips of the house I think or the garage so we need to go check that out and see if the wife's noticed I think it was cutting though okay we figured out the problem we were running it through uh, a four-way adapter which we shouldn't have done we should be going straight onto the main socket in the garage so plugged it back in we got it lights let's not worry about the lights for the moment so it had actually cut it and that's actually quite a nice cut there um, this is at 200 millimeters per second I think what from what I think so yeah the holes a bit yeah, but it made it better than this. That's a nice cut. But I've just knocked it down to 150 just to see. Okay, we've got an alarm come up saying hard limit here, which we didn't. Can you tell me which one at the moment? So again, that's interference. So we still need to do a bit more grounding. But that middle hole looks a lot, a lot better than the last one. Anyway, more experimenting. It does cut five mil. That's the thing, it is cutting five. Okay, morning after the night before. Yeah, I'm getting some nice cuts at the top here. That was going good. The holes seem okay one side, but not the other. So I can't remember. The way I got it set up, I use um, Fusion 360 to generate the G-code, which decides where it's going to go. And it does like a little V insert. Wherever it starts to cut, it sort of cuts, starts off the, off the cutting bit first and then comes onto it. So with the holes, it sort of starts off in the middle a little bit, then comes on and does the outside, then comes back out. So basically you start and stop never on a piece of work if you sort of mean it comes off and then like you do with a pair of scissors you'd come off from the side um bit of slag on the bottom there but this is yeah what is this Where's my... what is this sickness okay that's five mil stuff we're kiss kicking up there Anyway, I think we need to sort the earth out. The problem I didn't have this, well, I only really ran it quite quickly before, is because I um, didn't have the issue, because, uh, yeah, if you don't have the limiting switches on it, they can't get affected by interference. And, uh, yeah, so it wouldn't have switched off. So obviously now we've got the, the limiting switches on there, they can get affected by grounding. So I've started shielding someone. Let's just shield everything else. <laughs> Okay, lunch break, meal deal from Tesco's. Uh, yeah, I printed this the other day. I'll try and put a link to it. It's a, I don't know what you call them, a cable train, cable snake, cable train, whatever. You can't really see it because it's supposed to go, right, it's supposed to go on the, the X, Y axes. It can go on any axes really. So, gonna have to see if we can figure out. I'll print a few more, make it a bit longer and see if it will work. 
so that's what we're doing, as well as doing kids. I bought the 3D printer downstairs now in the garage so we can leave it going overnight and do some long prints, hopefully the air temperature not too bad. Must get a cabinet for one day. Picked up a cheap screwdriver set, thinking that'd be quite nice to fit under the table here. But yeah, still doing the earth, so let's carry on. We've got an hour or so to do some bits and bobs. Okay, uh, pop down home base and uh, got some bits of aluminium. So uh, we're gonna build a little bridge that goes on here, which will hold this chain. Well, I won't hold it, but it will just use it as a guide. U-shape may have been better, but I didn't have any. Uh, and I bought some wider stuff to hopefully go down that side at some point, because I think, yeah, we could do it with a bigger chain down there, which will take not only the this uh, XYZ axis, it will also take the Y axis as well because I've got XY at the moment, X is short at the moment. I may swap things around. Okay, we've uh, cut and bent this. It's not pretty, but it's functional. So we make a little bridge that goes across and goes onto those two nuts and bolts that hold the pulley wheels on, the wheels on, guide wheels. And uh, we can reprint the ends of this later. It's just to prove a point. We just need to make sure we can get things in the correct position. So yeah, let's uh, drill that, put some holes in it and uh, see if we can mount it. Okay, that's that bridge on, goes across there. Uh, I still know I need to upgrade all this. I'm just trying to at least get it to the point where I can print reliably. Maybe not 100% accurately, but we can get more accurate later. Because the brackets and things I need to make are sort of accurate-ish. But, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not brain surgery. So what we need to do now is mount this end onto this pole. This vertical, like that, so it's in a U-shape. And then that can be extended all the way to the end then. And that just gets tied down at the end nowhere else and so when basically that goes back and forward it does that and the cable's all inside there but we've got to put that in you can print these with removable clips as well so um but i found this one and it just seemed to work and i'll have to just feed the wire through in a minute by myself benefit of moving the printer outside you can do a 13 hour print overnight without disturbing anyone does anyone know what it's going to be i shall show you at the end of the video in a minute I don't know if anyone noticed, but I was putting it on the wrong way, and then I changed my mind and I put it on the right way. And then I forget to put the end cap on, which is the end mount that goes on there, which then I was doing that because basically this chain I think is a little bit too small for what I needed. Maybe, or whatever, Either the wire wires are too big. So that big plug for the stepper motor doesn't go through the old ear. I'm not going to try and pull it off, I'm going to try and bodge it. Okay, we're getting close now to the end of the video. Uh, I've got that uh, on with one screw, one screw that end. And uh, yeah, that's how it's supposed to work. As you can see, the cable isn't getting in the way of anything. It's the end stop, comes back. Need limit switches this end at some point. Honestly, I don't know if it needed to be so long, but obviously it doesn't wrap over. I expect it could have stopped here, really, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, 
Sorry about the OCD people, about that last bit. Being a bit funny colour. So hopefully you can live with that. There you go. All right, let's wrap it up with this last item. Have you guessed what it is yet? I don't think we can say that anymore, can we? Did you guess what it is? Was it a tool holder? No. A beer holder. I designed it while I was away, so it didn't fit where I thought it was going to fit. But anyway, it goes on there, and I printed it with too much infill. It took me ages to get all the infill out of there. All that just a snug fit. Ooh. Excellent. Let's wrap it up. Okay, I'm wrapping the video up now. Uh, thank you for hanging with me on this adventure of building a CNC plasma cutter uh, in my messy garage, which will, I'll promise to tidy up, but we got uh, a bigger snake being printed for along the other axes. So hopefully we can get that sorted next time. Cut my finger on a drill. Got the beer holder sorted next to the emergency switch because then they're both you know, your muscle memory goes bang to where the problems are. And yeah, hopefully the shielding, we finish off the shielding next time and we get some better prints. I'll order up some decent metal now and then we can actually sort of start uh, doing a bit more better practice and fine tuning. We need to mount the control box underneath as well. Mount the plasma cutter in there. There's still so much to do, isn't there? It's turned into a big project, but I can see the end in sight. So, which is quite amazing for one of my projects. Uh, let's just see if we can get there. Okay, uh, maybe scan video next week because I've still got to get some bits ready for the NEC show and get it even moving. And yeah, if you want to support me in any way, hit the like button, subscribe if you don't, that'd be brilliant to try and get my numbers up and uh, check out the description. Um, there's a list of the parts there as well as different ways of helping me if you want to help me in any way. But the main help is hit the like button, leaving, let me know what you're having for dinner down below, which I think we've got steak tonight. I like steak, I like steak. All right, uh, thank you number two daughter when you get back from your little break for editing this hopefully. If not, it's gonna be a week later because then she has to then go back to work. All right, thank you everyone.